You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on today's episode of the podcast, it's going to be a new episode that we're going to have on the podcast and a new series that I thought yeah, it's not a bad idea to uh, try on the podcast. And I thought on today's episode of the podcast, we're going to be starting a new different series of the podcast called Cricket Ramblings. Now, basically what Cricket Ramblings is all about, is just basically, basically me sitting here talking rambling on about a particular topic within cricket, offering my thoughts and uh, what I think about the topics within cricket today. So it's a it's a different um, sort of episode on the podcast, but uh, I think it's going to be quite an interesting series. Um, it'll be interesting to hear what people, our listeners, uh, people who subscribe to our channel, think about these topics within the game um, and offer their thoughts on the on the game as well on these particular topics. But um, if you have a topic that you would like us to discuss on Cricket Ramblings, you can send us an email or a direct message on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. So you can send us a message through there or an email to our email address, which is in the description of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast YouTube channel. And you can send us an email there on a topic that you want us to discuss on Cricket Ramblings in the future. So we would love to hear uh, what you have to say on that. But on today's episode of Cricket Ramblings, episode number one, I thought this was a good topic to talk about, to have a bit of a ramble, talk about it, and that's overrates. Overrates have been a big problem in cricket since the dawn of time. Um, and it's been talked about lately in in cricket um many people are not happy about the pace of the game today and it's an issue and a topic that always gets talked about every single time especially in test cricket and especially in general in the game so i thought for today's cricket rambling episode we talk about overrates and try and uh, talk about the solutions to this problem in cricket but also what are some of the issues and what can we do to improve overrates in the future? So let's talk about the overrates. As I mentioned, they have been a problem since the dawn of time. It's not a new thing in cricket, overrates being a problem in cricket. It's always been a problem, the pace of the game. And it's always a problem that gets talked about. But for those who may not know, let's go back to... Uh, the 1950s, for example. Um, I think many of our listeners and many people who listen to the podcast, even myself, before our time, the 1950s, but it may be a time where your parents and grandparents were born and they probably know about this if they were into cricket. Um, the 1950s. Overrates were a problem and a big problem in the 1950s, especially in test cricket. Test cricket in the 1950s, it was probably one of the most boring, drab sort of eras of cricket, especially in test cricket. A lot of the teams played slowly, overrates were poor, and teams scored very slowly, and um, the cricket didn't go anywhere. It was, it was just no proactiveness, no uh, urgency to get the game going whatsoever. And to put, it, to put it into context, back in the 1950s, overs in cricket were eight ball overs, whereas today they're six ball overs. So back in the 1950s, they had to bowl twice as many balls in an over as they do today, and they still didn't get through the overs, and they had slow over rates. Um, so, so in the 1950s, that was a big problem. It wasn't until the 1960s, it wasn't until Richie Benno, who we all know as a wonderful cricket commentator, one of the great captains Australia had, um, it wasn't until him that overrates uh, became better in the 1960s. 
Uh, Richie Benno, in his captaincy, he mentioned many times that I wanted to be a proactive captain. I wanted the team to run um, run around in the field quickly, get into position um, after every single ball and an over, get ready and get get the game moving. He certainly did that in 1960-61, the famous series that Australia had against the West Indies, which included the Tide Test in Brisbane. Um, Sir Frank Worrell was captain of the West Indies, and both him and Richie Benno played exciting cricket in that series. Obviously, they did. In the end, Australia won the series comfortably. Uh, but that wasn't the point. The point was to make cricket exciting again, to make test cricket exciting. They did that with the style of play that they played. All the test matches were very good test matches. and But the main thing was that they were quick about it. They were proactive. They got through their overs. They speed the game up. And it drawed the crowds back, as we saw in that series. Today in 2023 but in the modern era the pace of the game has gone on a downward spiral um and we've seen that recently in the recent ashes series in england uh where both england and australia were penalized heavily because of the slow over rates and a lot of people weren't happy about that a lot of people were you know quite fed up about that which is understandable especially if you go and watch a test match in a in a day's play uh times are tough um buying tickets to go to the cricket is very expensive especially in england you know when you go to a test match at lords it's nearly 200 pounds so it's very expensive so i think i can understand the frustration that many cricket fans have when they go to a play go to a, a test match go to a day's play and you want to get full value for your money you want to watch six hours of cricket and you want to make sure that every over is bold. But then we go the extra half an hour and the overs are still not bold. We saw that in this re recent Ashes series. We saw that in the WTC final. And we see that in just about every test match that's played today. And it's been a big problem. Um, so how can we fix this? Well, the ICC have done... Many different things over the years. They've fined the captain. They've suspended the captain. They've fined the team, their match fee. Um, that doesn't seem to be working. And since the WTC, the World Test Championship, uh, came into force a couple of years back, um, they have introduced points deduction for overrates, for slow overrates. And England and Australia... Uh, lost a lot of points in this recent Ashes series in the WTC because of slow over rates. They've tried everything, but none of the solutions they seem to be doing are working, which has created a lot of debate and which has got people thinking, how can we improve over rates for the better? So uh, what are the main problems that we face today? Why is the pace of the game so slow? Well, there's a number of factors. Number one, cricket's a very tactical game. In test cricket, captains take time to set fields, right? That takes a bit of time. Uh, batters are very picky about people moving behind the sight screen. And they even pick out people that are not even directly behind the sight screen, but they're either side of the sight screen or above the sight screen. And really, why are they looking in those directions anyway? They should be looking at the bowler directly behind the sight screen. That's another issue. Um, also, there's delays in play. The weather can be a big factor as well. Also, uh, players taking unscheduled drinks breaks, uh, people moving behind the side screen when the bowler behind the bowler's arm, uh, which can be frustrating sometimes when you're watching on TV. People moving behind the side screen, creating direct uh, distractions. Um, you know, um, DRS takes a lot of time for reviewing decisions um, and other things. There, there are a whole heap of other things that contribute to to the slow nature of uh, cricket today and the pace of it. Um, so, as I mentioned, the ICC have tried everything. And, you know, Usman Khawaja, Stuart Broad recently talked about, you know, the fining system being unfair 
and also the points deduction as well being unfair. But I think the ICC have to be firm on this and they have to do something to make it a deterrent. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, finding players isn't the solution. You can find the players as much as you want, but that's not going to fix the problem. Uh, so you need some sort of in-game penalty, I think, that's going to be a deterrent for teams to uh, bowl their overs quickly. And we see that in the recent new format called the 100, which is in England. Now, I know the 100's not everyone's cup of tea, but we're not here to discuss about the 100. Uh, that could be another cricket rambling episode. But um, in the 100, I think many people would notice that in the 100, they have an in-game penalty, which the ICC have adopted into T20 cricket and one-day cricket, where if you don't bowl the overs in the allotted time or the cutoff time, then you have to bring up one fielder from the outfield into the inner circle. And the ICC saw this and said, you know what, this is probably a good thing for T20 cricket, one day cricket. It's an in-game penalty. And you've got to have uh, that sort of deterrent. And it, it does make a difference, you know, because if teams have one fielder less outside the 30-yard circle, that can be the difference between that team winning and losing a game, right? So they have an in-game penalty of some sort there going to be a little bit challenging in test cricket to try and do that so what do you need to do in test cricket is to probably have some sort of run penalty uh, some sort of in-game penalty that's going to be a deterrent i think that's the best solution um so that's one option that you could have in in test cricket uh to improve the over rates because um you need that sort of in-game sort of penalty that's going to be a deterrent as we see in the limited overs formats, um, you have that um, in-game penalty, which is the difference. So that could be a solution, in-game penalty, runs, or something like that. Um, we see in other forms of cricket, first-class cricket, county cricket, Sheffield Shield cricket, um, teams are more urgent in terms of bowling their overs because in those sorts of competitions, you're going to get deducted points. And it's going to be the difference, like let's say in county cricket, it's going to be the difference between that county being promoted and relegated because they have a division system in county cricket. Um, it could be the difference uh, for that particular county, either you know promoting from Division 2 to Division 1 or going back down and being relegated into Division 2. In Sheffield Shield cricket, it's the same as well. So, um, you know, it could be the difference between that team qualifying for the Shield final or not. So we see more urgency in first-class cricket in domestic level, not so much international cricket, obviously. Um, so uh, with the ICC doing that with the point system and the WTC, it's definitely uh, caused a lot of debate recently following this Ashes series that's just happened. But you need some sort of deterrent there. Um so we see more urgency in limited overs cricket because they happen in one day. T20 cricket finishes in one day. ODI cricket finishes on the day. Whereas in test cricket, you've got, you got a lot of time. It's five days for a test match. So that's why teams are a bit slow in their overs. But I think the main problem when it comes to uh, in, in test cricket is that teams and umpires are not proactive enough. There's no urgency. There's no willingness to um, keep the game moving. And that's been talked about a lot uh, recently, especially umpires. I don't know if it's a directive from the ICC to say this is how you handle this sort of thing, but I think umpires need to be more proactive, uh, need to keep the game moving. That's their job. And, and obviously, being an umpire myself, that's your job. You have to try and keep the game moving and keep it flowing, which is the order of the day. But we don't see that enough from umpires in international cricket, especially test cricket. Um, the players have to be proactive as well. And you often see when a team's struggling in a test match or any particular game in any format in cricket, they often slow things down because they know they're behind in the game. 
We saw that in the recent Ashes series with Australia. Australia were guilty of that a little bit because they were getting pumped pretty much, especially Old Trafford in that fourth test. They were getting pumped by England. They had to slow things down because they were very behind in the game. Um, so you will often see that. The game situation will dictate the pace of the game. Um, so I think the main problem in in cricket in, in terms of the pace of the game is the urgency from both the players, both teams, but also the umpires as well. That needs to be improved. Get that urgency up. And also we can try different things as well. I, I think we're fearful in cricket to try different things try things that could benefit and could help the game immensely. Um, with the overrate issue, why not we try a run penalty system? Give it a go. Um, that will obviously have to be approved by everyone, have to be approved by the ICC, probably the MCC as well, because that has to be approved by their cricket committee, etc. and the ICC and uh, the member countries have to approve that as well, put that in the playing conditions. Um also, you could have, um, you know, a shot clock. I think that will be a good idea, I think. I know a lot of people talk about a shot clock in, in cricket. Um, obviously, in the 100 one-day cricket and T20 cricket, as I mentioned, they do have an innings timer on the scoreboard. Um, but in basketball, baseball, and even tennis, they have a shot clock, which um, counts down. Uh, you know, X amount of seconds um, in tennis, you have, I don't know, 20 seconds or something to serve. In baseball, you have 20 seconds to probably pitch the ball. Um, and in basketball, you have X amount of seconds to shoot a goal. So we could do that in cricket where you have a shot clock and it could be 20 seconds. Okay, so you have 20 seconds for the bowler to get ready and bowl the delivery and 20 seconds for the batter to get ready, face up, and get ready to face the uh, the next ball on the over. So that could be a one, one area that um, the ICC could try. It may work. It may improve things. But we won't know until you try it, until you trial these things. You've got to talk about these things. And I think in cricket, we are reluctant sometimes to try different things, to try things that are that are not natural to cricket. Um, but if we want to improve this issue and we want um, cricket to be better, and that's what you have to try and do, you know, that's, that's the goal of any organisation in any sport is to make it better. How can we make the game better? And this is probably one solution that we can. So it's all about trying to improve things um, and try different things. So if the ICC tried different things in terms of in-game penalties or shot clocks or anything else that could help uh, the game and in terms of the pace, then I think we could overcome the overrate problem. But it comes back to what I said early at the start of this uh, episode is that um, I don't think there's going to be a concrete solution to this problem. I think it comes down, as I mentioned, to the urgency of players. Uh, proactiveness from the umpires and the players will be the key in this. And that's the only way that the overrates are going to improve. Um, so there are many solutions to this problem. We can ramble on about this for a very long time. But, um, you know, if I did that, that probably would be a long episode. Um, but... You know, there are a lot of um, lot of areas that we can improve in this area of overrates, absolutely. But I think we just need to try different things and, and see if they work or not. Okay, if this particular method works, then stick with it. If it doesn't, then we can try something else. Um, so that's very important in, in terms of trying to improve things, as I mentioned, in anything in life, but also in sport, to make it better, is that we've got to have trials We've got to have different things that we've got to try out in a game um, to see if it will make the game better. But I think many people share uh, the consensus that overrates are a big problem of the game. They need to be improved, um, and players probably need to be more proactive. And I think it comes down to that. So if the ICC 
all the players and all the teams can work together, even the umpires as well, work together, find a solution that will work, then that will be great for the game. Um, it will be great to, to try and sort this problem out. But as I mentioned, it's not going to be an easy, easy fix. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of effort and time to try and improve these problems that we have in cricket, especially all problems. But this one particular problem, the overrate problem, is going to take a long time to try and fix. But the ICC are trying everything. They've tried everything over the years. They haven't worked, so they need to try something different to try and improve the overrate problem. We shall wait and see on how they do that. And that'll be interesting to see how, how they improve um, this problem in cricket because it has been a big problem in cricket for over a number of years. But um, that will be um, in the future and let's see what happens with that. Well, thanks everyone for, for listening to today's Cricket Ramblings episode, me rambling on about the overrate problem in cricket. Um, let us know if you're watching this episode of the podcast on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and um, you have any thoughts and ideas you want to share on this particular topic I've discussed in Cricket Ramblings today about the overrate problem, um, leave a comment. I, I'd love to hear what you have to say on the issue and what sort of solutions that you may have. And um, um, and hopefully it will improve the overrate problem. Um, so leave a comment um, if you want to offer your thoughts on today's Cricket Ramblings episode on overrates. Um, also a reminder, if you want to send in a topic that you want us to discuss on Cricket Ramblings and you want me to discuss, um, you can send us an email or you can message us on social media. Uh, we're across all the platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can send us a message there. Um, if you want a topic that you want me to discuss on the podcast on Cricket Ramblings, you're more than welcome to send them in. Um, you can also send them in via our email, which I mentioned. That's in the description of our YouTube channel. And you can email us on your topic. And with that being said, I hope everyone enjoyed episode one of Cricket Ramblings. These are going to be um, a regular thing on the podcast. We're going to do these um, episodes, um, a new series. So um, I hope everyone will enjoy it. Um, before we go, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're nearly to 700 subscribers. Uh, we're not far away from reaching that milestone. So Subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast YouTube channel. Get us over 700 subscribers and uh, help us tick that milestone off. Um, also, follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. It's encouraging to see a lot of people listening to us on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple, uh, which is great. Thanks for the support there. So make sure you subscribe and do all those good things. And... Uh, Share the podcast, share the podcast to other people. We want the podcast to grow and develop. And um, that's been the case uh, since we've done the podcast, which has been fantastic. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. Stay tuned for more episodes of the podcast to come. And also another episode of Cricket Ramblings will be coming your way. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.